Hello everyone, welcome back to The Greatest. If you're new here, hi, I'm Cherry, and this channel is about success-driven tools and strategies for new bloggers to achieve clarity and focus. Today, I'm going to teach you how to use WordPress as portfolio for your freelance services. If you're interested in starting a blogging business, but you're not ready to pursue it yet, you can pivot by offering freelance services. Or if you're already freelancing and you want to build your personal branding, this tutorial is for you too. But before you get too excited, here are the things that I'd like for you to consider before creating your very own website. Number one, what is the purpose of this website? So obviously for someone who is offering freelance services, this will serve as a portfolio. If a prospect client asks for samples of your previous work, you can simply share your website URL. And if the client is satisfied, he or she can reach you through the website as well, which I'm going to teach you how later on in this tutorial. Without a purpose, it doesn't justify the need for you to have one. In the end, you will just see it as a waste of your time and money. So you have to be sure that having a website will complement and represent you and your business in a way that attracts more clients. Number two, will this website provide a good return of investment or ROI? Assuming you're offering freelance writing services, so most likely you will encounter clients who ask for samples or ask for samples. Obviously, you either share a Google Drive or Dropbox folder with your previous works, but most of the time, they will ask you to write something for them. If you are familiar with this kind of scenario and you think unpaid writing samples are a waste of your time, then get a website. Here, you can write blog posts, case studies from previous works, even product reviews from affiliates. This way, you're not just um, service-based or client-dependent, dependent, but the website will allow you to have another stream of income for your freelance business. And number three that I want you to consider is, do I have the time to make sure the website is well-maintained? A WordPress website requires less maintenance, believe me but you have to check at least once a week to make sure everything is working perfectly. Are your buttons clickable? Is your Instagram feed loading properly and on time? Do you have broken links that need fixing? Are you introducing a new product or service? If you don't have the time to do these, then it's probably not a good idea for you to have a website yet. Remember, there are platforms out there where you can find clients. There is LinkedIn, Facebook, Facebook groups, Instagram, Pinterest. But having a website for your business makes you look like a professional, even if you're just starting out. And in this industry, I think personal branding plays a very important role for our success as freelancers. All right, so let's proceed to our tutorial. Today, I'm going to create a portfolio for a social media manager. So assuming you're done buying the domain name and web hosting for WordPress, and if you don't know where to get these, I will have the links in the description as well as my previous tutorials on how to go through them, how to buy them. But for now, let us go ahead and start this tutorial by proceeding to our WordPress dashboard. And here you go. So for this website, I am using the domain name yoursocialmediamanager.com. Okay. So the first thing that I need to do is Number one, change the, and customize the WordPress theme. So to do this, I'm let me go to our dashboard, go to appearance, and then click themes. All right. So right now we have, you know, by default, 
WordPress is already giving us options but right now I'm gonna click add new and install Astra all right there you go install Okay, and then activate. All right, so now that our theme is active, let me go ahead and delete the others because we're not going to use them. Okay, delete. Okay, delete. Okay. Delete. Okay. All right. So that's our theme. So let's have a quick look at our website. There you go. All right. Next is to customize the theme. Let us click customize. Go ahead and click global. Topography. Base topography. Um, so far, I like the font, but let's change it for the sake of this tutorial. I'll have Open Sans. And then font size is, okay, 50. All right. And then go back. Headings. I want my heading to be Leto. Okay, there. All right. Let's go back. Colors. Base colors. For the accent color, I'll just leave it as is. Our theme color is blue. Text will be black. Okay, just keep it basic. Um, container. Um, I like the box layout. So we're not going to change anything here. For the buttons, we'll just leave it as it is. Go back. Go back. And then let's go to our header, site identity. I wasn't able to create a logo for this website, so we'll leave it as it is. So I'll just fix this. Your social media. Your social media manager. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to put a tagline because I don't want it displayed. Just the site name. Okay. So let's go back. Primary header. Um, I'll leave it as it is. Okay. Primary menu. So far, we don't have any because... All we have is a sample page, but we'll fix that later on. All right. So let us proceed to our next step. Don't forget to publish to save your changes. We'll fix the other parts of the website along the way. Next is we need to add pages. So let me close this, go back to the dashboard and click pages for this website we will use two let me remove this one first 
All right, and then click Add New. Okay, so here I will put your social media manager. Work with me. Just for, for SEO purposes. So I put our site name, your social media manager. And then the purpose of this page, which is to, you know, get clients. So publish. All right. Go back. Add new. And then I'm going to add blog. Just in case, you know, we want to publish blog posts in the future. And also, by default, recent posts are shown at the homepage. So since we're going to use the homepage as portfolio, we want the blog posts um, on posted on a separate page. And this is where we want it to go, the, the blog page. Okay. And then optional pages that you can add on this blog or on this website. You can add legal pages, uh, which we already have one here, the privacy policy from WordPress. Now, the legal pages protect your website. So as much as possible, you can get legal templates from the get-go. And if you're interested on where I get my legal pages, I will have the link in the description. But for now, if you're still not sure if you really need it at this point, it's perfectly fine. So there are three pages that you need for legal purposes, the privacy policy, terms and conditions, and the disclaimer. And that's it. All right? But for now, we'll just skip those. Okay? Next, number three, we're going to install our plugins. So just go to plugins and then add new. All right, so first we're going to install Google Site Kit. So even if we're not going to use this website for blogging, I suggest that you get Google Site Kit because you can monitor how many visitors go to your website every month or every day, or every week. So this way you'd know if your website is getting attention online or not. All right, almost there. Next, we're going to install insert headers and footers. This allows you to add codes on your website in case you need it. Like, for example, if you want to connect your Pinterest account to your WordPress blog or WordPress website, you need this plugin, Insert Headers and Footers. Next, I'm going to install the WPS Hide Login. This plugin hides your default login page. So for all WordPress websites, you just add wp-admin to your url and there you go that's your login page so in order for us to protect the login page and prevent you know others from trying to log in without you knowing or without your knowledge then we need to hide it we will remove wp admin and then change it into something that's easy for you to remember but hard for other people to guess there Next, for SEO purposes, I still recommend that we add Rank Math. Just like I said a while ago, same thing with Google Site Kit. You want to monitor the status of your blog. Are you getting traffic? Uh, are you getting prospect clients? Where are they coming from? And of course, we need to have a website that is SEO friendly. Thus, 
having a, a plugin to help us out. So that's Rank Math. Okay, next we have of course our page builder and that's Elementor. Elementor. We're going to use this to design our home page. Okay, to back up our website, we have Updraft Plus. And also to optimize our, I compress our images. I'm going to install this one too. The WP Optimize Clean Compress and Cache. All right. And then let's install Updraft Plus. All right. <laughs> The next plugin we're going to install is anti spam B. This is for to help with filtering spam comments. All right, and last but not least, we will have the WP Instant Feeds plugin. This is for Instagram. There. Okay. All right. So let's just go back to let's go to installed plugins and then activate them one by one. All right. Now we're also going to delete those that we're not going to use. So we will delete a Kismet. Okay. And hello, Dolly. All right. Okay. And then we will activate the rest. Okay. Okay, let's skip this. All right, go back to plugins. Okay, activate insert headers and footers. Rank math SEO. All right, skip now. Return to dashboard. Okay, go back to plugins. Okay, activate site kit. All right, updraft plus. There you go. Instant feeds. All right. WP optimize. All right. And last, WPS hide login. All right. Next step, number four. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Number four is to design our work with me page. So let us go back to our dashboard. Go to pages. 
go to work with me and then click edit all right so let us go to page attributes to see if our page is ready for elementor um let's put no sidebar um hmm. We're going to disable the title, disable the featured image, footer bar will leave it as is, and then let us put full width content for the layout update. All right, and then edit with Elementor. All right, so we are now at the Elementor dashboard. So the first thing that we need to do is to create a call to action button. Okay, so for the first block, I want the client straight up to know what I can do for them, what I can do for them, and how to contact me. So for this, we're going to click the plus sign and then choose this layout, all right? And then I'll customize it to minimum height. There you go. All right? And then go click this, and then I'll put text heading. Oh, no, actually, let me remove this. Delete, then add this instead, text editor. There, okay. Then I will put something like this. There. I'll make the text a little bit bigger. Don't forget to always click update to save your work. Let us go to style and place it at the center. All right. Text color, I'm good with black. There, let's just make it a bit darker. Topography, we'll use Lato. Or, yeah, I think that's good. And then we'll make the font size bigger. There, let's check. All right. <laughs> Apologies for the background noise. Okay, let's just go back to content because I want the second sentence to go at the center. There you go. Let's see how it looks. All right, much better. Okay, okay, I'm all good. And then I will click this and then add a button here. Okay, so let's customize this button. Instead of click here, I want it to say, let me help. Let me help. And, all right, so under link, this is where you want your visitors to be redirected once they click the button. So assuming I want my client to reach out to me via Facebook, so I will put my Facebook page here where they can message me. So facebook.com forward slash the creatives there. And then I'll click the link options and then open it to a new window. All right. For the alignment, I don't want this here. I want it at the center. So I'll just click here. All right. Okay. And then for the style, I want the font to be same thing, Leto. There. Size, let's make it big. There. 
or make it 25. There. Let's see. All right, much better. Text color, that's fine. White. Background color, let's make it blue because that's our accent color. There you go. Now, when you hover, uh, let's say we want to change it. Let's put the text color to black and then the background color. Um, let's make it white. There, let's give it a try. Ah, uh, there. <laughs> okay. Then up. Don't forget to update the change uh, to save your work. Hover animation. Let's say shrink. I want it to shrink there. All right. There you go. Update. For the border radius, um, I want it to look like an oblong. There. Okay. Let's see. All right. So far, I like it. All right. And then always click update to save your work. That's the first block. If you want to add um, an image as background, we can do that too. So just click this. All right. And then go to style and then go to background. Uh, we will, assuming we want to change just the color. So let's put color is blue there. And then for the second color, we need to choose a darker blue. So let's try. How about let's just do blue. Uh, all right, there you go. Okay, let's see. Okay, so this is how the block would look if you just want a gradient color as background. But if you want an image, let's go back to background and choose this classic. And then we will put click here to add an image. Uh, I'm going to get a photo from Pexels and as a background color, and then we'll upload it. All right, so I was able to download a photo from Pexels. I'm uploading it now. There you go. All right. And then insert media. And there you go. So we'll change the settings, position it at the center, all right, Al attachment, make it fixed, all right. So when you scroll up and down, the image stays where it is. And then no repeat. Oh, wait, hold on. Mm. No repeat. And then for the size, we'll choose cover. All right, there it is. And then update. Okay, so far so good. Next, let's proceed to the next block. So for the next block, I want to introduce myself as the social media manager. So I will, let's try a template. So, and then go to blocks. All right, I'm going to use, let's say I'm going to use this, and then insert. Okay, in order to get access to the library, we need to get a free personal account. So to do this, just click Get Started. All 
Okay, but since I've been using Elementor for a while now, it's a, it is it, it auto populated, and I already have an account. So in case this is the first time that you're using Elementor, just click create an account. But in my case, since I already have one, I'll just click login. All right. All right. So and then just click connect. All right, so I was able to connect my free account with Elementor. So there you go. That's my template. So we'll change the text. Let's click and then here. Um, I have already prepared one ahead of time. So I'll just copy this from my notepad and paste it here. Assuming I am a social media manager for online course creators. So that's my statement right there. Okay. So again, it's asking for a link to where I want my visitors to be redirected. So for now, I'll just leave it as it is. And then I'll click the one at the bottom. I don't need this, so I'll just right click here and then click delete. There. And then here, instead of read more, I will put let's chat. And again, I'm assuming I want them to contact me on Facebook, so I'll put my Facebook page. There. And then Click link options and then open to new window. Now I see that the text is turning green whenever I hover my cursor. So let's change that. Uh, text color. Let's go to hover. There you go. Let's change it to blue. There. Same thing with the border color. Okay, let's see. There. Is the black too harsh? Let's try to lighten it up a bit. So instead of black, let's try something gray. Okay, I think that's better. Or blue, since that's our... That's our accent color. And then I'll edit my text because I want the second sentence to start on the next line. Let's see. Oh, there's a glitch right there. Oh, it's not doing anything, so. All right, let's just leave it as it is. And then since the text will disappear since we're using the same color, let's change that. Let's look for a more brighter blue. Okay, let's look for oh, this one. Okay, let's try a different shade of blue here. There, okay. There, okay. Same thing with the other one. Okay. 
error. All right, there you go. Much better. Okay, let's just one more time. Let's just check if my text has the same topography as the one on top. So it should be Leto. There. Okay. Then update. All right. So far, so good. Next, let's proceed to our next block. And our next block is my how can I help block. So I want to show my clients the, the packages or the services I offer. So scroll down. Let's click this folder. If I if we can use any available templates here. Mm. Well, so far I don't like any of the templates we have here. So let's just close this. Click the plus sign and then select this. All right. So I want to insert a heading on each block. So this one, I want to put Instagram marketing. Next, I will add Facebook. Oop. There. Next, we'll have Pinterest. Okay. And then let's go back here. Oh, sorry. Let us go to this box and check the style. I want the text color to be black. There and then topography, same thing. Plato, there. Let's see. Okay, and then I want it to be okay, all right. So I'll just leave it as it is. And then alignment is I want it at the center. Okay, let's move on to the next. Same thing. I want the text to be black. And then for topography, we'll change it to Leto. There. And then alignment center. Then last, we have Pinterest management. Same thing. And then under topography, change it to Leto. And then go back to content change the alignment to center all right so far i like it don't forget to save and then go back to this one because i want to add icons so under instagram now uh, let's see what else we can use there you go Insert. Nice. Facebook. Let us click here. Scroll down. Look for icons. Drag it here. There. Go to icon library. Then Facebook. There. Let's use this one.
And then for Pinterest, same thing. Let's insert icon there. Pinterest there. Uh, let's choose this one. All right. Um, just to be aligned, let's move the icons at the top. Uh, let's move it. Drag and drop. Okay. Drag, drop. Drag and drop. Okay. And then I will add another text at the top. So click here and then I'll put... Oh, hold on. I'll put... A divider is it possible to add a divider no mm -hmm. I will add another space here instead all right and then click here and then I'll put text and I'll put how can I help align at the center, text color, I'll leave it as it is. Topography, I'll change to Plato. There. Okay. Let's see. Or let's change the font size, make it look bigger. There, 40. All right. All right. So assuming we want the visitors to contact us upon clicking these icons. So how do we do it? So when you click the icon, here you will find a space for the link. So let's say I want them to reach out to me via Instagram. So I'll put my Instagram here dot com forward slash here and then click link options open the new window for Facebook I want them to contact me on my page so again facebook dot com slash there and then link options open a new window for Pinterest, so I want them to reach me via Pinterest so they can also check my account. Dot com slash link options, open a new window, and then update. And then I want to add another text here at the bottom. So I'll click this one and then this. Then I'll put text editor, okay? And then let's say they need all of my services. So I'll just put here, not able to find what you're looking for, book a 30-minute discovery call for a custom quote. So I'll change the alignment to center. Text color, I'll make it black. Topography, same thing. Plato, I'll make it a bit bigger. There. There. And then I will add a button to where they can reach me. So there, okay, same, same thing with the one we used on top. Actually, we can use this too. So you can right click over here, copy, scroll down, right click, and then paste. So let's just remove this one instead. 
All right. And then instead of chase, say, let me help. Let's put, let's talk. So if you want them to be redirected to a different social media account, instead of Facebook, you may do so. You can just change the URL here under links. Again, don't forget to save. All right, let's have a look. All right, so far, so good. Let's just adjust this one, this block to, so we can put more space. Uh, let's put a minimum height. Oh, it's two. And then adjust it to 300. There, I think that's much better. All right. All right. Okay, let's save this and then proceed to the next block. So I want to add testimonials on this portfolio. So let's create some. Okay, so this time we're gonna click the plus sign, add this, and then this one, and then add text heading. And then I'll put here what my clients say. Then align at the center. Change the, hmm, let's keep it blue. I'll change the topography font to Lato. All right. And then size to 45. All right. Next, I want to add um, intersections for the testimonials. I'll drag this one. All right, so far I have two, and then I'll add one more. There, add new column, okay? So let's go back to this, and then I will put text editor there, and then I'll put my first testimonial. If you have previously worked with a client, um, it wouldn't be too much to ask for testimonials from them. Just tell them that you will put it on your website, if, if that's okay. But if you sign an NDA, um, I don't think they will agree. But you can ask just to be sure. So, okay. <laughs> this is, yeah, that is my first testimonial. I'll just make it darker and then same thing Lato for the font style there. Um, all right. Next, let's have another one. There, change the text color and there. Oh, it's too big. There you go. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, and then let's add one more. So drag text editor, copy and paste your testimonial. Here, there, and then adjust the font style. There. So I'm changing the text color, make it black, and then for typo, we'll use Leto. There. So let's have a look. All right, so far I like it. <laughs> I just made those up <laughs> for the sake of this tutorial. All right, next we will have our contact form seven or other ways to contact you if the client is very happy with your portfolio. So, First, let us update and then go back to our dashboard because I forgot to install Contact Forms 7 earlier. So, go to dashboard. All right, let's go to plugins, add new, and then let us add contact form 7. Installing now. All right, and then activate. All right, so, okay, let us go to settings. All right, and here we already have a form um, made for us. So let's just click edit. All right, so this is the form that clients can fill up in case they don't want to message you on Facebook or on Instagram or you want them to book a discovery call by sending you a message so let's go to mail because you have to be sure that the email address you have here is the one that you're really using or else you will lose clients or else you won't be able to they won't be able to reach out to you on time so if this is not your email address you change it and then click save All right, so whenever a client uses this form, it will be sent to my Gmail account because my Gmail address is here. All right, now how do we use this form? So using this short code, we copy, copy this. Let's just, let me just open my notepad here. All right, and paste the short code and then go back to pages edit with Elementor and 
There you go. Then scroll down. Let's use this layout. And then click here. Let's put our text editor here. And then we will paste the short code here. There. And then don't forget to save. All right. And then let's just put something here on the other side. Oh, there you go. So that's, that's your form. So let's put the text here. Thanks for stopping by. And then let's have another text here. Oops, sorry. Can we add one more? Oh, it's not letting us add one more. Let's put a divider instead. There. All right. And then let's add text here at the bottom. Okay. If you want to... With you. Okay. If you have questions, feel free to message me using this form and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And then let's make it black, change the font to Leto, and adjust the font. Let's see. There you go. And then for the divider, um, let's try to use something else. Um, okay. You see there are many options here, but let's just keep it simple. And for the width, let's just leave it at 50. All right, so that's good enough for me. Okay, but hold on. As you can see, we have a white space, like a margin on the left and right side of the page. And we don't want that. We want it to be stretched. So let's try to fix that by going back to our dashboard. Okay, let's go to page attributes, go to Elementor full width, update. All right, let's see. All 
Oh, okay, still the same. So let's go back. Let's go to Astra settings. Instead of full width contain, let's try full width stretch. All right, refresh. There you go, okay? All right, so I want to add color to this part just so we can divide it or separate it between this block and the one at the bottom. So let's go back to edit with Elementor. So as you can see, you edit and design the website along the way. So if there are parts that you don't like, you can always go back and edit, just like what I'm doing right now. <laughs> so there is no right or wrong here. And besides, the intention is for visitors to know that you are a social media manager. So what you're trying to portray is that you are the best social media manager for their business. And they won't judge you if your website is not, you know, 100% perfect. So, there you go. Let's scroll down and go here to what my clients say. I'll change the color, the background color to gray. Let's see. Oh, it's too gray. Um, let's adjust it, make it more lighter. There. All right, that looks good. Okay. If you think you need more space in between the blocks, you can always click this one and then go to layout. And then under height, you just put fit the screen there. Okay, same thing with this one. You can click here, go to height, and then fit the screen or you can also do minimum height it's really up to you there for me i think the minimum height looks good all right now for this i want to add a little bit of space There, or I'll, instead of 400, let's make it 300, there. Okay. All right, let's add some finishing touches. Assuming we want to, you know, animate some of the texts. Uh, let's try that here. Oh no, the, this one is already has its effects. So let's scroll down. And go here so let's say we want to animate this one go to style let's see if we have that option here no I don't want text shadow oh it's not giving us any oh there motion effects Entrance animation. Uh, let's try this out. Oh, there. Okay. Okay. There. Uh, for now, let's just put fading in. There. Next, for this part, for how can I help, I want the icons to animate when it's hovered. So let's go to style, hover, let's put shrink there. Same thing with the Facebook icon. Go to hover, shrink, there. Last one, for Pinterest, hover, 
trick. Just so you know what other animations can do, you can let's try pulse. So there. See that? <laughs> we have pulse grow. There. Cute. And then grow rotate. There. <laughs> And what else? Pop. There. So let's just stick with shrink. And then save. Alright. Okay. And that's it. So let us do a quick preview. Hold on, let's... Okay, there you go. So there. Alright, so far I like it. Alright. Awesome. Alright. So let's close this one and proceed to the next step. And that is number five is to customize our widgets. Because as you can see, the home page doesn't have any because we took advantage of the space for Elementor to design the page. So we will use the widgets here at the bottom, here, and then on the side for the blog page. So to do this, let's go back to our dashboard. All right, so let's go back to our dashboard. And then go to Appearance and Widgets. So for the main sidebar, as you can see, we have all these. So just to give you an idea, let's go ahead and visit the site once more. And go to there. This is a. Uh, let's go to blog. There. So, as you can see, you know, all recent posts will go here. And then these are the widgets that we have. So, and I want it changed. So, let's go back to widgets. I want to remove search. And I will also remove recent posts because this is not a, this won't function as a blog. Comments to archives, no, because we're not going to do a lot of content here. Same thing with categories and remove the meta. So instead, what I want to do is to add my Instagram feed. So I'll put add widget and then here I'll put my username and then adjust the photo size to small and then click save. I also want to add text. Text to the main sidebar, add widget and then, hi, I'm Sherry here. And then I will put the same statement I used at the home page here. And save. Okay, I'll put it on top. And then assuming I want to add my photo here. So, add image, and then upload files, I'll just select um, a photo from my desktop.
Okay, I'll just put my my dogs here. Then add the widget, and then save. Okay. All right. So there you go. <laughs> there. Okay. Then I'll put here. Small and see. Okay. All right, looks like the images are still too big. So instead of small, I'll just put thumbnail, save. Same thing with our footer area. So I'll just put, instead of small, I'll adjust it to thumbnail. There. Then let's refresh. Okay, that's much better. One more. Let's try to fix it. Uh, fix the items per row. Let's make it three. Refresh. And there you go. Yeah, that's, that is much better. Okay. All right. And then let us go back to this one and click customize. And then let's go to home page settings. So instead of your latest posts, you'll click a static page. And then the home page will be the work with me page, the one we did earlier. And then for the posts, it will go to the blog page. So then click publish. And there you go. So let's close this. All right, there you go. Okay. Okay, so far. So far, so good. I think we have a little fixing, a little polishing, but for now, I think we were able to create the, the base for our portfolio. Now, before anything, before we end this, make sure that we back up our website. So let's go back to our dashboard. Go to settings, updraft plus, and then go to backup now. There. Always back up your website. So in case something happens or there are changes that you want to undo, you can always go back to your previous settings. So um, I back up my website every time I upload uh, a new blog post. So if I upload a blog post today, I'll back up the website today. All right, so there you go. That's our backup, and that's it for today. So I hope you learned something from this tutorial, and I was able to show you the very basic uh, functionalities that you can do with WordPress using Astra and Elementor. If you have any questions, feel free to comment or message me, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.